Happy Wednesday, CCMP family. Pastor Jason here with you this week. And it's just, I hope it's been a good week. I hope you've been enjoying all the fall weather, fall temperatures. And it's been kind of sunny too. It looks like there's going to be a little bit of rain on Friday here in North Carolina. But besides that, it's going to be an amazing week here. And so enjoy it. Uh, one of the things I've told, I've told people before is... Because I've been, to, I've traveled to all kinds of different places in the world, but one of the, out of all the places I've traveled in the world, here's my wholehearted belief: there's no better place to be in the spring and the fall than North Carolina. It's cool, crisp in the morning, warm in the afternoon, and usually the weather's pristine. So it's just hard to beat. So I hope you're able to enjoy it. I hope you're able to work. I hope you're able to spend some time outside. Spend some time outside this week. This coming weekend, maybe attend the CCMP Fall Festival this Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2. It's going to be just a great time. It's going to be just an amazing, great time. We're going to have a parking lot full of, ca of cars out here at the car show. So you're going to, so if you like that, if you like visiting, like seeing, man, come on out. Please check it out. All kinds of festivities for the kiddos down, down, down in the football field. Concessions will be running. You'll get to see some of our church. We're going to have a ministry fair tent where you get to see a little bit about who CCMP is as a whole body of believers, not just not just what you see on the outside, but really what is the heartbeat of who we are. And so all that being said, I encourage you, come on out, check us out again this Saturday from 11 to 2, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, it's just going to be a great time for family, for some good family fun. And I hear there's going to be some candy apples, so you do not want to miss fresh made candy apples. Just saying. Now, with that being said, I wanted to kind of, this week, I hope that, I hope last week, last week may have been, and don't tell Pastor David I said this, but last week may have been one of, if not my favorite sermon that I've heard him preach. As we're deep, as now we will, we're deep into a, this three-part series that he started this past Sunday on the story that I'll tell, meaning, meaning the story that you tell out of your pain. Out of the pain that you experience, out of the pain that you go through, out of the times of trial and tribulation. And really what Pastor David is trying to talk about is what story do you write? And the choice, really it all comes down to a critical choice. And last week was heard. I hope you come back or encourage others to come if they struggle with this kind of stuff. I mean, we will have a funeral tomorrow here at CCMP. And so with that, we will, with that, it's a it's interesting that that synced up directly with where we're going to go this week as Pastor David's going to be preaching on part two, loss. So I encourage you, if there's people that you know struggle with this, this is a good Sunday to invite those people that you've been concerned or that you've been thinking, ah, maybe not, maybe not this Sunday. Go on and invite them. Go on and invite them. Even if it's just one Sunday they come, maybe this is the Sunday that the Lord wants to speak to them. And their heart is their heart is softened enough to hear and receive what God wants to tell, what's just wants to speak into them, into their life. So, but with that, I really was prompted to go to this place and to this story in John chapter five. This story in John chapter five, which is the healing at the pool of the of Bethesda, and it's the healing at the pool on the Sabbath, and it's just this beautiful part because really where you're going to find is. We're going, we will experience all of these different situations that Pastor David is preaching on in the midst of this series. We will experience hurt. We will experience loss. And we're going to go through, and we will go through those if we are living life, regardless if we're submitted and desiring to look like Jesus or we're not. Everyone deals with this stuff. And so it's not something that we walk through life and don't experience. It's something that everyone, regardless of what you believe in, will experience. And so Jesus runs into an individual in the midst of this in the midst of this story. And when he runs into this individual, he engages him in the midst of his affliction, in the midst of his pain, and gives him a choice. And so I want to look today, and I'm going to read just eight verses and skip down and read one more verse. And I, but I think there's real, in the midst of this series, I think there's, th there's three real powerful takeaways that ultimately can influence us and impact us as we walk through this type of situation, as we walk through pain that we experience in this world. So let's jump in. John chapter 5, and I'm going to start in verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, in Aramaic, 
called Bethesda. Some of your translations may say Bethsaida. Which has five roofed colonnades. In these, I'm in verse 3 now, in these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? And I look at you in the midst of your pain and your suffering and your hurt and your loss. Do you want to be healed? Verse 7. The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed, and he walked. I'm going to skip down and read verse 14. And then verse 14, Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple, the same man who had been healed, and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. And nothing far worse may happen to you. And so as I say all that today, I think there's three amazing characteristics that we can see. Three amazing characteristics that we can see about how we process hurt. Because the reason that this man was here, because what was known at this pool was there was a, there was a gas bubble that was being released from the, earth, from the earth, from within the earth, and it would be released inside this pool. And so every so often, routinely similar to the geysers out in Yellowstone National Park, and they would be released. And so tradition, the tr tradition of the time would say that if you would experience that, if you would see that and experience that, that it was an angel that was causing that water to be stirred up. And so if you would come and the first person to touch the water when it started to, to bubble up, that person would be healed. And so there was a ton, hundreds of people that would feel, uh, that, that were afflicted by pain, afflicted by paralysis, afflicted by a physical ailment of some kind, blind and lame, as we read the word. But they would come and they would wait and they would bubble. And when it would bubble, they would rush to get to the water and get to it first. And really, and then we see in here, though, in verse 5, one man there was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. And so, at this point, I don't know if this individual was someone that had been lame, someone who could not walk, someone who, when we see the word lame, meaning they can't physically move themselves. They can't physically move themselves as, God, as they were created to move, as they were meant and built, as the human body was meant to move. They can't move themselves. But he had been there for 38 years. So I don't know if he was 38 years old, and that was what had caught, he had been this way his whole life, or he got injured as a child, or something. But the thing is, at 38 years of age, he had probably been taken care of by his family, his family, those around him for so off, for so long. And yet at this point, the reason he's at this pool is because maybe the people that, and I'm reading into the story a little bit here, but those that had been taking care of them were no longer alive. And so here he is. So here, so here he is an individual, either from birth or for majority of his life, he is here. And he's been at this pool a long, long time, trying to get healing, trying to experience. And I, and what I, and what's interesting about this picture is that I think of all the people in the church, and they try to live off of like if this man had lived for had lived for a long time with his parents. And I think there's so often that we have we have people in our congregation, and we live in an area of the world that is culturally Christian. And, well, my mama built this church, or my mama was in this, or we've grown up, but mama took me to church. I have new, I do the new membership process here at CCMP. And how many times do we sit here, and I'll have a conversation with someone, I'll say, well, tell me about your story with Jesus. And they start off by how long they've sat in a pew. And, and I listen, and I'm always nice and respectful, but I end up asking them, well, that's how long you've gone to church. Tell me about your relationship with Jesus. Because there's a difference. Pastor David from the pulpit has said multiple times that just because you're in a car doesn't make you, I mean, just because you're in a garage, excuse me, it doesn't make you a car. Just because you've sat in a pew for a chair in a church building for a long, long time, that doesn't make you a Christian. And I think for so often, we can, we can identify with the blessings of our parents, but yet not carry that over in our own life. 
And I don't, I don't know necessarily if that's the, that was this individual's, this man's problem, but what I do know is that he has an affliction that, is, that has impaired him from being able to do what he was necessarily created to do. And it took an encounter with Jesus for him. So one, one thing to keep you is don't let the past become your identity. Don't let the past become your identity. Don't let the past become what Jesus is meant to be. And here, and, and so we move on. And then the next part that I want to see is Jesus poses him a question. Do you want to be healed? Because that's the thing about miracles in the Bible that we see. We see, one, it's the faith on the one that's performing the miracle, the one that's praying the prayer, the one that's laying on the hands, but it's also the faith of the one that is coming to Jesus or the one that is coming and needs healing. So that's the dual side of, of healing. Sometimes we're like, well, I got prayed over and God did nothing. But did you expect to be healed? Did you expect it when you came into the presence? And I'm, again, that's not, I don't want to lay guilt and shame because, but there's a two-sided coin to healing that we see in the New Testament. That we see with Jesus. And Jesus poses the question, do you want to be healed? And I think where you're at in the midst of your pain, loss, your affliction, do you want to be healed? And here's the response the man gives, because the man doesn't really answer Jesus' question. The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am going, another steps down before me, meaning another beats him to the pool and gets to the bubble before him. See, here's the thing. He made an excuse. He answered Jesus' question by saying, Of course I want to be healed, but I just can't get to the water. I just can't get to the water. And so if your past isn't stopping you from experiencing healing and experiencing the miracle that God wants to perform in your life, my question is, is the excuse that you keep saying, the busyness, that I'm so tired, that I can't do it, that it's so hard, and is the excuse what's keeping you from experiencing the healing? But then thirdly, and lastly, and I'll close with this, Jesus says in verse 8, after he's just given Jesus his excuse. Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed, and walk. In verse 9, now once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. And what I love about that is this. Get up, take up your bed and walk. And Jesus is asking that man to do something that maybe he's never done in his life. Maybe he was injured as a child. But it's something that he has never done in 38 years, and Jesus is asking him to do something for the first time that he's, that, that he's never done in 38 years. And maybe where you're at, my question is, the healing is right there in front of you, but my question is, are you willing to do something that maybe you haven't done in 38 years, you haven't done in a long time? Are you willing to be obedient to Christ where he's convicting you at? And that, and, and that obedience is what will release the healing in your life. That obedience is what will release the healing in your life. But if you're not willing to get up and take up your bed and walk and do what God is convicting us, convicting me of right now and something in my own life, if I'm not willing to get up and take a step towards Christ regarding this thing that's causing me pain, I will never experience healing. Those are the three things that I think we all have to walk through. Your past can no longer be your identity. The excuses, you have to stop making it, you have to stop making the excuses. And third, you have to respond in obedience. And if you want it to sit and if you want it to be sustainable, this is a bonus tip today. Verse 14, Jesus meets him again and says, See, you are well, sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. Really, the goal isn't even the healing. The goal is to follow Christ. Wherever you're hurting, wherever you're in pain, get up. I know it's hard. I know it's challenging. But don't let the pain become who you are. Don't make the excuse anymore. Choose and you are free. You are free to choose to be obedient to Christ. And then go and sin no more and follow Him. So I hope, I hope you're doing, I, I hope this has helped. Encourage you. Can't wait to see everyone out there at the Fall Festival. Have a great week.